Hi, this is uh, Professor Cummings. I wanted to come to you with another video continuing the series of kinematics uh, rotational analysis. Again, this is kind of the, the bridge. I like to think of this as the bridge between kinematics, your kinematics equation, your kinematics classes, excuse me, and mechanical design, how this starts to apply to mechanical design. So I do have another example problem that I wanted to, to start off with here. And it is this one here relating to these two gears uh, in mesh with one another. So let's see here. We have a motor gives gear A an angular acceleration of alpha sub A is equal to 4T cubed radians per second squared, where T is in seconds. So the motor is tied to this gear here, and it's rotating. It looks like it's going clockwise, and its acceleration is given to us as a function uh, of four, excuse me, let me go ahead and put this in here. Let me just make this into a pen. Acceleration is given to us as four T cubed radians per second squared. All right, so that is the acceleration. So it's, it's accelerating at that function with respect to time. You know, now, if the gear is initially turning, so they're giving us an initial angular velocity, the initial turning, is 20 radians per second. So this thing had been spinning, it's going to this acceleration, and it's, we're starting the clock uh, at 20 radians per second. So that's for gear A. Determine the angular velocity of gear B when T is equal to 2 seconds. So we have a interval of time that we're going to be concerned with, which is 2 seconds. Right, so what's a few things that we can know before we even get started on this problem or go with this problem? One thing is the angular acceleration is given to us as a function. You know, so we know that we cannot use our kinematic equation, which are for constant acceleration. This is going to change with, with every moving second or every passing second. Our initial velocity is not zero. Our, our starting point isn't zero. It's 20 radians per second. So these things are already in motion. And they give us an interval of time. We also know the radii. This one is 0 0.05 meters and 0.15 meters for A and B. Uh, another thing we can say, based on this, based on the fact that these are two gears, a very simple gear train in mesh, that there's going to be two different angular velocities. It's going to be an angular velocity of A and an angular velocity of B. And they're going to be proportional by these radii, by each respective radius. And they're going to have a common tangential velocity between them. So we will be able to relate our equation, or ultimately rate our equation, based on that common tangential velocity. That's kind of the bridge from the information we have for gear A and taking it to, the, to finding out information for gear B. So they didn't give us a final uh, velocity, angular velocity. We're going to have to figure that one out, calculate that as we go through the problem for A. Um, they did give us a function for the acceleration. And basically, they gave us nothing but the radii for B. Now, one thing about this, this is, again, I mentioned this in one other video, that this is how we start deriving things or where the concept of velocity ratios come from our gear ratios in this particular instance. So again, let's go ahead and stay organized and let's put together, you know, write down all of our givens as well as put together a free body diagram. So again, our givens, our angular acceleration is given as this function. Our initial angular velocity is given as 20 radians per second and our window of time is two seconds. I didn't have my, my radii together, but those are up here. And as we put them together, I've drew in the fact that there is a common tangential velocity between them. So VA is equal to VB. And we're going to be trying to find the angular velocity of gear B, which we have almost no information except for the radii on. So let's see. So let's again yeah, get into a, a thought process to this. How are we going to approach this problem? This is probably one of the more important things to kind of get your mind clear. And we did this in the few, first few seconds of the video. Now I'm going to write it down. And again, since the angular acceleration is a function of time, it isn't constant. So that means we can't use the kinematic equations. We're going to need to use another relationship. 
So you have to use a different relationship in order to calculate the velocity. And the relationship we will use is this. The concept that acceleration, angular acceleration in this case, is the derivative of angular velocity with respect to time. So we can use that and we can develop a function for the time. Then once we've got a angular, you know, or a function for, for, excuse me, a function for angular velocity, once we have that function, we can now start looking at that relationship between gear A and gear B and that common tangential velocity. So let's take that. So gear A and gear B again have a shared tangential velocity. So that's going to be a very important part of it. So basically we're going to come down to this equation here. So the tangential velocity of BA equals uh, B sub B, which also equals omega sub A times R sub A, which is equal to omega sub B times R sub B. So let's get going. So let's start the calculations here. And we can go ahead and you know, state our, our ultimately how we're going to start this. We're going to need this particular relationship. Acceler angular acceleration is equal to the derivative of angular velocity with respect to time. And this is the function that we've been given. And knowing this relationship, we can prepare for our integration, which is you know, again, if we just take this and do our a little bit of arithmetic, multiply by d sub t on both sides of the equation, you know, the derivative of omega is equal to alpha times derivative of dt with respect to time. So integrate both sides. Again, this is going to be a definite integral, you know, going from an initial to a final acceleration and an initial and final velocity. There's to be time and uh, angular velocity. So starting off at 20 radians per second up to whatever that final um, angular velocity is going to be on the left side of the equation and from 0 to 2 seconds or t uh, as we do the integration on the function of acceleration and again just this is a real simple integration it's just the power rule so the on the right or excuse me the left side of the equation you know th that's just going to end up being um, omega a minus um, omega, you know, when it's equal to 20. On the left side, the 4 comes outside the infinite sum. You know, you add 1 to the exponent of t, divide by the new exponent. So it'll be 4 over 4, t to the 4th. And then you're going to have to look at it with the span of time from 0 to 2 seconds. Right, so there we have it, omega sub a. Uh, let me bring out my pointer again. Omega sub a minus 20, so that's our initial, and this is our final. Then we get 4 over 4 times t to the 4th, minus 4 over 4, and our initial is time is 0. That's where we start the clock, to the 4th, so this whole thing goes to 0. We add 20 to both sides, and we have t to the 4th plus 20, and consider that our t, our time, is 2 seconds. t to the 4 plus 20. So if we consider this, so now, okay, let me pause this. Now we have a function for the angular velocity of A, of, of gear A, right? So we have an angular velocity, so that angular velocity is t to the 4th plus 20. So now we can use this to figure out what the velocity of A is at 2 seconds. So here at 2 seconds, we take our function, plug in our value of 2 seconds, and we end up with, you know, 2 to the 4th plus 20, which is just, you know, 16 plus uh, 20, which is 36 radians per second. So now, you know, we have a value for our angular velocity. We also have a radius for our angular velocity of 0 0.05 meters. We have a, a radius for B of 0.15 meters for gear B. And we still need to find the angular velocity of B. But fortunately, we have this relationship here that we can consider. So we're going to use that relationship to progress on this problem. So again, this is all the things that we figured out from the last slide. And so let's move forward. So again, we've got that ta common tangential velocity, very important for moving forward. 
So we know that tangential velocity from A is going to equal the tangential velocity of B. We also know that the omega angular velocity of A and the angular velocity of P, B are going to be proportional, you know, based around those radii. So what we have is we have this portion of the equation, like I said, that we were going to work with. And all we did was divide both sides by the radius of B. And that solved us for the angular velocity of B. So we have omega sub A times R sub A divided by R sub B. Now, in order to move forward, we just plug in what we know at two seconds, that's 36 radians per second, times its rate, respective radius, you know, the ratio what we're looking at between the two radii, 0 0.05 meters over 0.15 meters. So there it is, that's your gear gear ratio. And you end up with 12 radians per second. So that is the angular velocity, the angular velocity of gear B. So, again, and you would use this in a lot of different mechanical designs. You use this, and basically you take this simple concept on simple gear train, and you can move forward to all sorts of interesting and exciting types of mechanical designs, particularly, you know, gears and pulleys and whatnot. So, again, you know, leave your comments, your thoughts, uh, and particularly any questions, things that need clarity, and I will talk to you in the next video.